Hi, my name is Marianne Oakes, and I'm a complex abdomen specialist at Regions Hospital in St. Paul, Minnesota. We're a level one trauma center, and we see a lot of big wounds and fistulas and that kind of stuff. And my passion happens to be big wounds and fistula and that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I started this YouTube channel, kind of doing the how would I do it? As you know, we all need help, right? We all are trying to figure out how to handle all these different complicated cases. And so I started this YouTube channel to kind of do so. So today we're talking about negative pressure wound therapy with the 3M Alta pump. And I'm going to go through advanced settings. I have a YouTube video that's already been published about the basic setup and kind of using the factory settings and all the bells and whistles of the pump to get you set up using the Alta with installation. But I'm going to do today a little bit deeper dive into how to use the pump and how to make it work for you. Today, we're going to talk about negative pressure wound therapy with installation with the advanced settings for the Alta pump. We do have a complexwounds.com website that has lots of helpful hints if you want to go there. And we have other videos previously that talk about the basic setup. So our objective in the previous one was to figure out who gets the therapy, how to put the different pieces on. So that's already in that other video, so I'm not going to go through it. Standard setup and troubleshooting, and then of course the secret pen, which is one of my favorite things. But this time we're gonna do only the advanced stuff. And so decision-making really is no change. We look at what kind of drape we want, what kind of negative pressure therapy we want, always keeping in mind what we're gonna do at discharge. You still need the same components to this. You need the installation cassette, which is kind of like the IV pump of the Ulta unit, the holding of the discharge from the wound, some kind of fluid and then the dressings. Capabilities are kind of all over the place with this pump. You can set it for as short as just a couple of minutes and as long as a couple of hours. And so you just need to figure out what works for you. And so the factoring settings are 10 minute soak, three and a half hour cycle at a negative 125. My favorite is a five minute soak every two hour cycle. I use different negative pressures depending on what kind of wound it is. If it's a big necrotizing soft tissue wound and I have a, a lot of tissue and I don't have any organs that are exposed, then I like a higher pressure, uh, like a negative 150. If I'm on the abdomen or I have exposed organs in the field, like uh, testicles, or if the bowel is nearby, then I use lower pressures like a negative 50. I'm going to show you how to program your own volumes in rather than using the autofill program. So if it's a medium dressing with the thin cover layer, it's about 60 mils. If you have the thick cover layer, it's about 100 mils. So it's not that much volume that you're actually putting into these dressings. We have a lot of helpful hints on how to do so, but we really have found that um, most people are just going by clinical experience rather than any kind of math calculation. The software and the pumps help for sure. So if you hit the question mark, it will actually diagnose the problem and kind of lead you in the right path. A lot of times it's that the little tubing has gotten kinked for the installation, the canister is full, or the track pad has gotten all gumped up with the debris that's in the wound bed because it's really good at washing that, that debris and bringing it out. And so a lot of times you just have to change out the track pad, maybe move it over a centimeter or two so that you don't have all that slime in there. And that's what's plugging it and the pump is alarming. You definitely can use more than one therapy unit. They don't have to be in synchrony. So let's get to it. So you have your four choices here. and We're going to go into VAC Veriflow, which is what is called the instill. This is our cute little stylus. I like to call it the magic pen. And so we can touch everything. Right now, I am in the default, which is the factory settings. 10 minutes, three and a half hours, negative 125. And so what I want to do is touch the advanced settings and then go back to the last arrow. I'm gonna start in the vac phase rather than the instill phase, and I'm gonna turn the fill assist off. That way I can choose how much volume I want. So let's say I want 50 milliliters and I want it to be at a five minute soak time, which I like better than the longer soak times. I have less leaks. And I think that the more frequent washing does actually help the wound bed. So I'm gonna go down to two hours. So I am at 50 mils, a five minute soak every two hours. I'm gonna say, okay. 
and then I can re-verify what I'm doing. If I'm working in the abdomen or near any kind of organs, I'm gonna turn down my pressure to 75 or 50. If I'm gonna be in big necrotizing soft tissue, I will go up to like 150, 175. Today we'll say we're just gonna leave it at negative 125. Medium intensity just means how quickly the fluid or the air is pulled out of the foam itself. And we're gonna stay, even though we know that in installation therapy, we have the instill time, which is where there's no negative pressure, we're still gonna keep it in the continuous fashion. And then we're just gonna say, okay. And then we're gonna get our seal check. And then the installation will start after the first two hours. The reason I start in the vac phase rather than in the instill phase is a lot of times I'm working in the OR. And so what do you do at the end of putting on a vac dressing? You move the patient, right? Because that's the last thing that happens in the OR is that we will put the vac on, you get a seal, and then all the drapes comes down and everyone picks up the patient and moves them over. And then if you're not in the vac phase, you're in the instill phase, a lot of times that dressing will be dislodged. And then 10 minutes later down in PEC, you the negative pressure deploys and you have a leak. If I'm working in the operating room, I always, always, always start it in the back phase. So you have to go back two steps and then switch it to the back phase. The other reason I started in the back phase, even when I'm not in the OR is because I really want to make sure that my dressing has a super seal before any of the installation, right? And the best way for that to happen is to allow it to be in negative pressure for the first two hours. And that's, so that's why I, I'm always in the vac phase first, whether I'm in the OR for certain reasons in the OR and then at the bedside for certain reasons at the bedside. But just generally speaking, you'll have less leaks and problems if you start in the vac phase rather than instill phase. And with that being said, this is the end of our advanced setup of the VAC Ulta Pump. I hope it helps you in your clinical practice. Remember, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll get notifications. Otherwise, we have our website, complexwounds.com. In there, you can send me messages. We can chit-chat back and forth if you have questions or any good ideas. And other than that, I hope you have a great day.